What if addiction is as simple as some form of limiting beliefs that are keeping you stuck in that addictive loop? And I think this concept is pretty interesting because when we go back to the fundamentals, everything is inside our mind and our minds essentially create the reality. So why are so many people addicted to food, sex, drugs, whatever? And I had an idea today that it might be as simple as some form of limiting beliefs. And let's take, for example, like drug users and they, they use the drugs to feel good. And then afterwards they feel totally depleted. And the reason why they continue using those drugs might be because they have a limiting belief that they can't reach that same level of satisfaction or bliss or whatever it is that they try to get from that drug. So essentially it's, it's a loop and their mind is keeping them stuck in the familiar because the mind can only perceive things that has happened in the past. The logical mind is a combination of everything that has happened in the past. It doesn't know the future and that's the problem with the, with the logical and rational mind because it's essentially an old record playing. And once we start realizing this and once we start to, to try to find the deeper reasons of addictions or any impulsive behavior it somehow has to be in the mind and there's so many doctors and and people who are trying to find the external reason and it's because of your environment and it's because of your childhood or whatever but that's also just a result of something so what if we change our internal beliefs and we stick with a new way of doing things and with time we override that limiting belief and we replace it with a new belief and that way we can get away from addiction and I feel my personal story has been about this and especially my relationship with alcohol has been a huge one and also with weed I've I haven't drank or smoked in like five months or so six months almost and I don't even feel the urge to do it because I kind of it just felt natural to stop and and it was because meditation and other practices gave me the same feeling and yeah I don't know maybe I am addicted to meditation or some other exercise or whatever and you might even say that that human nature is addictive in in its fundamentals but if you choose uh, a good thing to be addicted to or a bad thing to be addicted to I guess the smart thing is to choose the good. So by changing how we think and what we believe, and there's a theory that every belief is essentially a decision that we've made somewhere in our past and, and that's, that, that got hardwired into our brain and that's why it's so difficult to change. But once we start becoming aware and we start to prove to our brain that this belief isn't true, we are able to get over that same behavior and then we can rewrite the new behavior. So I just felt an urge 
to share about this idea about addiction because I've been surrounded with all kinds of addictions in, in my life and, and people who are addicted to different stuff. But nobody ever thought about this limiting belief loop and the, the kind of narrow power of the mind. The, the, the mind, the, the conscious mind is such a small part of our behavior and, and our actions. And the reality is that our subconscious and unconscious mind is the bigger ruler. But so many people aren't in, in touch with their subconscious or their shadow and, and all these underlying things. And that's why they actually believe their rational mind and, and they remove the possibility of, of magical things and unexpected things and, and these things that we can't explain because it feels safe to be in that rational mind because that's what we're taught to do. And this is where meditation also comes in because when you go into meditation and you go into these kind of lower or higher vibrational states, if you will, this, it, it, you relax your body, but your brain gets into kind of these higher fields. And there's this whole science about this, of the, the level of consciousness and how the vibration and they can measure it. But in this current world, where we're so used to believing that we need to run, we need to, to hustle and we need to kind of do these things with force. Otherwise you can't be successful. And then there's the whole schooling system. And then like Rockefeller wanted to create factory workers and that's the whole foundation for our schooling system. And that's why you don't actually learn any valuable like real world stuff. In, in, in public schools because you're designed to be at a certain level. You're designed to be the, the kind of modern slave. And if people understood that their rational mind is the limited mind, and, and that's also like the level of consciousness, it's the lower vibrational states and it's based on fear and, and survival. And these are also called like primal states because it's if you live in nature you need those and and then if you look at animals they have these states but then they kind of remove themselves when the danger is over and they have all these shakings and they rest and and just to get back to the kind of normal baseline but the modern society has been so controlled to just keep on stressing, keep on just moving on and don't stop. And that's put a lot of people in chronic stress. And what's chronic stress? It's like chronic fear disease. You're in constant fear. You're just like shaking. And that's why there's so many illnesses. That's why there's so many addictions and, and all these negative things. Because our own minds are programmed to be afraid and to be in this constant fight or flight response mode. So the answer to all of this and the first step you can do is to slow down and kind of, okay, start thinking about your own thinking. Start questioning, oh, why do I get this urge and, and why, why am I so addicted to, to sugar? Why do I need that rush? And just to make it clear, it's really difficult to stop it right away. Your, your mind is the first place you can start to switch things up. The external world has a, a little bit of lag and, and this lag makes it really difficult and, and makes a lot of people relapse, even if they go to, to communities and, and uh, all these 
rehabs and and stuff like that because it's so easy and the brain wants to keep you in the familiar that's 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 his job it's it's the safety mechanism to be like oh yeah yeah but come back here come back here and i i felt it like myself multiple times it's it's just like you feel such an urge to be like yeah yeah but i need to do it I, like i need to do it and w the only thing you can do is like become aware and question yourself oh, why do i need to do it is there something that this feeling is telling me is it is there any other way i could reach this feeling and and i think exercise is a really good thing to kind of get out of any like addiction or stuff because that also rewires your brain and especially if you aren't used to exercising just go for a run do something and, and that was a major point in my life also when I realized that I kind of neglect the whole exercising part because I also feel there's a some kind of weird thing about exercise that it's it's only to keep you slim and that you that you don't get fat or something like that but that's just so surface level thinking because people can be different sizes and it doesn't always have to be with the exercise and of course there's all this nutrition and 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 stuff like that but everything starts in your mind and then that becomes an action and then that triggers a feeling and that feeling will give you a reaction and and this is the only way you can kind of change your your mind and just to get back to these limiting beliefs and the whole point with with addiction and and how you can easily start to prove your mind wrong and the the biggest thing in change for me has been when i kind of surrender and i sometimes it's an external force that kind of shows me that yo you just need to surrender your ego and and just kind of quit what you think that you need to do and and that's been the the path of growth but the way you can do it with yourself is by writing down like your limiting belief you, you let's say addicted you're addicted to alcohol and you you honestly think that you can't be that happy and excited without alcohol and this is your limiting belief then you can write down okay what would be the the new decision that you want to make and it, it might be like okay uh you want to play football or or whatever sport and and this is going to be the thing that gets you as excited and happy as drinking alcohol was before and then what you do is you start writing out proof you're just like okay i went to a game and i felt really happy i saw professional players who've talked about that they don't use drugs or drink and uh, they feel really excited about their games and and the things that they do and and so on and you can the more you kind of prove your brain wrong the more you're gonna kind of rewire the brain connections and it's called neuroplasticity you rewire the old connections and you make new ones and this is when you really start to change your life and and the thing is that a lot of the advice out there still says that yeah you just need to change the external things and uh yeah you have a bad relationship you just need to change person or something like that change the relationship but the same struggles and the same problems will persist if you don't change yourself and this has been the biggest realization for me that 
I won't get any other results if I don't change myself. My internal world is the roots of, of my tree. And the more roots you grow, the more potential for fruit and leaves and all these beautiful things. So if, if you're still in that mindset that you blame external things and, and, and I know how that feels. I've been there for so many years. I thought that all these external things have to change for, for me to be able to change. But the funny thing and the paradoxical thing is that you actually change your inside first and then the world starts to change around you. The same with addiction. You change your inside, you change your brain and, and your experiences and that's when your external world will start to change because your action will start to change, your habits will start to change. And that's the fastest way. And I don't say you can't change with changing like external things. And, and there's, there's probably going to be a point in time where that's also really beneficial. My point here is that I've realized that the biggest change I've made in my life has always been the internal things and it's usually when I'm in some kind of defensive mode I'm really reactive and then there comes a point in time when I kind of realize like fuck I messed up I need to kind of take my ego down and be like shit I wasn't this great magnificent being that I thought I was and had all the answers so once you are willing to give in and give space for the internal kind of transformation, that's when the real change start to happen. And I don't say that you need to do this alone. I think there's probably a really great power in communities and, and talking to people about this and, and that can really help. And I, I don't suggest anyone just keep to themselves so I, I i just want to give you this idea and tool that changing yourself is the most powerful way to change your external world that i've come across and and j i just want to know like plant medicine and and like these psychedelics and stuff Nothing changes in the external world when you take psychedelics, but everything changes in your internal world when you go into these altered states of consciousness. And even if it's from a plant or whatever it is from, it still changes you from the inside. And these internal changes are new proof for your old limiting beliefs that there is something new, there is something else. And that forces your kind of ego and, and your limiting beliefs to start being like, oh, there's a new territory on the map. There's something else that we thought that wasn't possible. So when you wanna change from the inside, you need to be aware and give space to the magical, to the unknown, to be open-minded that, wow, there might be stuff that I don't know. And if I'm willing to take in something that I don't know, it's really probable that there might come a thing that's gonna change you from the inside out. Okay, that was my rant on addiction and how I think it's all connected to the inside and the limiting beliefs and uh, yeah thanks for watching and subscribe if you want more of these ideas that are coming straight from my consciousness it's a uh, it's a stream it's not planned and if you like this like it and comment below what you think about this that helps me spread my message and uh, 
That being said, stay cool. Peace out.